Welcome back, traders, stackers, and truthers. So going here. We're Wednesday, March 28, 2018, and this is your Bitcoin news for today. And I'm telling you, it's looking good. So let's start off. Why Bitcoin's death cross may be a bear trap, which I believe is what's going to take place here. If a lot of those guys are shorting it, I think they're going to lose their shirts. It says here the Bitcoin risks entering a death cross soon, but the bearish signal will likely not be as severe as it's been made out in reports. A death cross occurs when the 50-day moving average cuts the 200-day moving average from above, and that creates the bearish crossover, indicating a long-term bear market going forward. So as seen on the Bitcoin daily chart below, the 50-day moving average looks set to dip below the 200-day moving average imminently. Will it? I don't think so. So I'm going to share with you a little bit more of that story here. So if you want to decide to get out of it, it's up to you. Some strategists are saying that the death cross could yield a big sell-off in BTC, possibly as low as $2,800. I don't think so. A level that was last seen in September 2017. The story goes on to say, however, such fears are likely overstated as the crossover tends to work as a contrarian indicator. Oh, I love it. You guys all know I'm a contrarian indicator. They're all saying it's going to collapse, it's going to collapse. I'm like, no, it's actually the bottom, <laughs> right? So anyways, long story short, guys, uh, I love it. And they say here that uh, these these bearish crossovers, they tend to occur at the end of a big bear move with prices rallying soon after. So what's going to happen if we rally? All hell will break loose. Abra CEO predicts Bitcoin price boom will return this year guys i gotta reiterate something that was cut off in my last video i was sharing with you how that uh, technical analyst had made a prediction of thirty thousand dollar bitcoin by the end of 2018 or i'm not sure if he said by the end of 2018 but he did say in 2018 at the end of that video right i was closing up i said and my call was forty five thousand by the end of 20 and it, the video got cut off right there so it was by the end of 2018 well i'm telling you after reading these stories i i'm I'm feeling I'm going to be very correct on this call. So guys, I got to share this with you because this is this is where the big money is about to come in to the game and it's going to change the whole crypto sphere altogether. Mainstream financial analysts might be fixated on Bitcoin's so-called death cross, what it might mean for flagship crypto cryptocurrencies moving forward, but Abra CEO Bill Benhard believes that another rally is just around the corner. Bernard, who once designed trading systems for Goldman Sachs. That's right. He knows all about these systems, the trading systems, right? He told Business Insider that hedge funds and other institutions are beginning to see crypto assets as a huge opportunity and that all hell will break loose once they begin investing in the nascent markets. So, Gold and Silver Traders, those of you who've been watching me for years, I know when I switched gears in 2017 and I told you guys I'm taking my money mostly, almost all my money out of the markets and I'm getting into the crypto sphere. A lot of you were, well, not a lot of you, but some of you were disappointed to the point where you even sent me an email. Say, said, well, go, man, you know, I wish you'd just make these videos on gold and silver. I'm like, guys, you know, I've been talking about it for a long time and I've been saying since I first opened up my silver gold man channel in 2014, I was telling you guys, are you going to buy it at 15? Are you going to buy it at 12 or are you going to wait till possibly that touchdown at $9.80? So I've been bearish on gold and silver for the longest time. That's the contrarian in me, guys. You have to understand, I'm. you go watch everyone else on YouTube and they'll probably, the first thing you'll see is like, man, this guy's opposite from everybody else. Well, that's what gives me that kick-ass track record. I don't follow the herd. I, don't, I do my own research, my own thought process. I read the information and some of it, a lot of it is shared from my subscribers. Read it and decide from there which way I'm going to go. So my decisions are not based upon YouTubers. Unfortunately, that's how a lot of you do your investing, but that's not how I work. And guys, and I, that's why I had to jump out of the gold and silver and get into the cryptos because I knew that there was a great opportunity, a big one. I'm still kicking my ass for not having... I not listen to my friend back in 2011 when I broke my neck in three. I should have just not listened to him. I should have went out and bought the 10 bitcoins. I can't blame him. It's my own fault. You know, it's, it's my own fault. It's my own decision. I, I decided to not do it. Now I've decided I'm going to get into the cryptos and I'm sticking with it for now. Okay, guys? I'm not saying this is going to be a, a bull run forever, but for right now, 
massive, huge opportunity in the crypto sphere. So the guy goes on to say, I talk to hedge funds, high net worth individuals, even commodity speculator, speculators. Uh, they look at the volatility in the crypto markets and they see it as a huge opportunity. Once that happens, all hell will break loose, he said. Once the, flag, the floodgates are open, they're open. He said that institutional interest is already starting to tick up in Japan, which he said is a leading indicator of what will soon happen in the West, regardless of retail interest, which has seen a sharp decline in the recent months. He says there really, uh, there really is zero large-scale institutional money from the West in crypto right now. That is happening in Japan. He says, once large, sizable chunk of Western institutional money comes in, watch out. Yes. Bada boom, bada bing. It's going to be a kick-ass year. So this next story here, I don't really agree with it. And I got to tell you guys, this is where I, I got to really sit back and like, okay, well, I said this and I think that what's going to actually going to transpire? Well, I think Bitcoin is going to go up and I think Bitcoin cash is going to go up. But I just had to share this story with you that what they're saying and what I've said in the past. So they're saying here Bitcoin cash bull uh, failures could see traders move to Bitcoin. So they're essentially, essentially, essentially saying that traders are going to start getting into Bitcoin because the Bitcoin cash is not working out. Well, I got to remind you that I made a prediction a long time ago that I see, I foresaw that in the future, Bitcoin cash will probably surpass Bitcoin at some point you guys remember i was talking about that back in early 2017 when we traded bitcoin cash that one day live remember for a couple of days actually and people were i didn't know nothing about bitcoin cash so people that were in it they were telling me oh well you know it has low transaction transaction fees and the processing speed is quicker da, 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 da. i'm like what and it actually has the original source code of bitcoin i'm like oh wow well that's going to be a contender for Bitcoin in the future. Well, this next story I'm sharing with you, it kind of points that Bitcoin is going to have a hard time in the future. And this is what it goes down to the processing fees and everything else. So I'm not going to go over the entire story here, but essentially, as you can see, it's all about the the assumptions around mining costs and the reality of it that 60% of the Bitcoin revenue could be getting eaten up by operational costs just due to the fact of how much electricity is used to mine the Bitcoin. So I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I bit, I think Bitcoin may have a little bit of a hard time. So I'm not going to read the entire story here. You can hit the space bar if you want. But this is all about the uh, the fact that these uh, the uh, Bitcoin itself, hum, uh, the um, difficulty rate on mining has gone up so high that it takes you a long time to mine the Bitcoin itself. So essentially, uh, they're saying to generate a Bitcoin block, you would spend 15 million worth of electricity since each block, came, block contains around 1,500 transactions. Each transaction will cost around 10,400 and U.S. cost of 11 cents per hour for, per kilowatt per hour. The, uh, the energy consumption per Bitcoin transaction will come to around, yeah, <laughs> 1,000 kilowatts. So this is not going to work moving forward, okay, guys? Now, sticking with the mining part of it, i got to share with you this other story here, guys. Bitcoin miners have flocked to places like Iceland above, which has geothermal power to spare, but for small U.S. towns in upstate New York and Washington, a mining operation makes a big dent in the local energy resources. Small town tries to tame the Bitcoin boom. Bitcoin boom. So here we go. By estimates, just one Bitcoin tra transaction devours 215 kilowatt hours of electricity, enough to power a home for a week. Yeah, just one Bitcoin transaction. I don't know if these numbers are correct, but I'll tell you that Bitcoin Cash, I, I think it may have a place in the future. All right, I'm going to finish this up with EOBot. EOBot, so the link's down below. I've been talking about this site for a long time. I was telling you guys, you can come in here every day and get a free coin. And uh, if you decide to put money in, which you can't now if you're American, you can if you're Canadian. But there's a couple of changes. Uh, the biggest change of all is they've extended our contracts to 10 years. I was like, whoa. And I've been forgetting to mention this. This has been out since March 18. I've just been forgetting to mention this. 10 years. We originally only had five years of GS. <laughs> They're going to have 10 years until the electricity hits 100%, whichever one comes first. So, yeah, good news for us. 
Somebody said, thanks for not making any videos about Snippy. I'm like, well, you can see the numbers. We're having an impact. Hope you enjoyed the update, folks.